charisma is more important than game. Now, before you make any judgments of what I'm even saying, because I'm sure some of you are like, charisma is game, or game is the end all be all, or game doesn't exist, game is your, just your face, bro, and your genetics, bro, for you autistic black pillars out there. Look, it's important for me to define terms first of like what this even means, okay? So let me read you a YouTube comment that I made uh, pretty recently and also as a community post for you to sort of understand where I'm coming from and then we're gonna dissect this further. All right, so here's what I said uh, in response to a YouTube comment. Game is like offense and looks is like defense. If you have a decent amount of both, you'll win a lot. If you have a lot of one and none of the other, you will lose a lot. You need both looks status and charisma determine attraction and game is your ability to facilitate a romantic interaction based on that attraction wow you look poltritudinous you look very poltritudinous what does that mean what do you think it means i don't know guess huh you never heard of that word no poltritudinous I don't think y'all were paying attention in English class. I guess that's our moms. You want to meet our moms? I'm yeah. fine with meeting your moms. Yeah, yeah I love moms. Hello. <laughs> I'm I'm Kevin. I, I told whoever's daughter this is. She's very poltritudinous. I don't know if you know what that means. Seems like she. Oh, she does know. She does know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> no, she does. Yeah. Someone gets it. Told you. She's like, what language yes. is that? Yeah. English? Dumb, no, no. I think I'm smart. I, really, I'm not. I guess not. Yeah. I was trying to be super classy and impress her with my words. And now I'm trying to impress her mother, too. I hope it's working. Maybe we not. Going. You go to the Mirage? That's what we're huh? Going. We're going to the Mirage. Are we, are we about to all drink with the moms and the yeah. daughter? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay. Did you just pay for me? Yeah. Wow. I'm flattered. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's the pharmacist. Awesome. Yeah. Now some, uh, you know, PUA guys, game guys, whatever you want to call it, they make a distinction between uh, inner game and outer game. Inner game being the internal confidence and conviction in yourself as a man that you're basically worthy of attracting a beautiful woman, right? And, and having the confidence to actually go and speak to her and do the things necessary in order for, you know, romance to happen. Outer game being more sort of a strategic thing of like, okay, well, what do you actually say to her? How should you approach her, right? If there's two girls versus three girls versus a whole group of people, what are the different steps that you take? What's the exact right, you know, Tinder messaging and Tinder bio, et cetera, et cetera. So that's outer game and inner game. Now, I don't want to confuse you guys and everything here, so, but I know before you clicked on this video, you already have sort of preconceived notions and ideas of what these terms mean, but it's really important for me to define these terms before I get into the topic at hand. So when I refer to game in this video, I'm not referring to inner game, that confidence. I'm referring more so uh, to the outer game part, like the strategic part of how to, you know, seduce a woman or how to facilitate some sort of romantic interaction. So with those terms being defined, so people don't spurg out in the comments and, you know, I have to go in later to actually explain <laughs> myself. I hope you guys understood there. If you don't understand from what I just said, I apologize, but here we go. Okay, so here's the dictionary definition of charisma. A personal magic of leadership arousing special popular loyalty or enthusiasm for a public figure. Uh, another one is also a special magnetic charm or appeal. Uh, so I agree with those definitions, but also I would like to kind of add to that charisma is also your ability to be interesting to other people, to bring value to other people, to have the right body language, vocal tonality, and actual substance of words that make you an unforgettable person in other people's eyes, more specifically in a positive light. And in order for us to compare charisma versus game, again, the game definition that I mentioned previously, we have to see how those two sort of interplay with one another. So one, is it possible to be charismatic and have no game? Absolutely. 
See, this is something that a lot of people uh, mess up. They think that if you're charismatic and you have social skills, all of a sudden you're definitely going to be like good with girls. There are plenty of guys who are extremely charismatic, very sociable, very friendly that are just terrible, terrible when it comes to romance attraction and seduction now these people they can definitely have the ability to develop that skill rather quickly i like to think of it as if like okay if we're talking about basketball for example let's say a super charismatic person is equivalent to a guy who's seven feet tall and athletic all right if he's never touched a basketball in his life and he doesn't even know about the game of basketball you throw him a basketball he's probably not going to be very good he won't know how to dribble he's not going to know how to shoot but his ability, his sort of uh, threshold for having good game, and in this case, being good at basketball, is really high because he's basically very talented uh, from the get-go, right? So he has a lot of potential. So there are plenty of guys who I've helped out before that you know have a great friend group uh, who are extremely charismatic, very good storytellers that are just terrible with girls. <laughs> Okay. And a lot of these guys are even good looking as well. It's just because they don't have sort of the training or the understanding of uh, what it takes to you know, facilitate a romantic interaction. And more specifically, a lot of times they have sort of these mental hangups. This is where the inner game part comes in of, oh, well, I'm rude if I you know, let a girl know that I want to hook up with her, that I'm interested in her. Like, oh, I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to uh, risk actually her thinking badly of me. Those are more sort of internal mindsets. But once you can overcome that, those are some of the easiest people to work with. So let's take the opposite scenario. Is it possible to have game and also have zero charisma and still be successful with women? Technically, yes. It just depends on what types of women that we're talking about, right? So the traditional pickup artists, especially back in the early 2000s, a lot of these guys would have these sort of like canned and, and planned routines that they would do in front of a bunch of uh, drunk, naive women in hopes of basically tricking them into getting into bed with them. And regardless of whether you think that this is cringy, unethical, whatever, it worked. A lot of guys who initially got into pickup, for example, were sort of those really socially awkward guys, guys who weren't very charismatic, you know, the stereotypical guy that would just play too much World of Warcraft and Dungeons and Dragons on the weekend. And yet through learning this game, through learning mystery method or reading the book, the game, they were able to sort of hack the system in order to actually have a chance with these girls without really developing much charisma. The art of game from that standpoint is really just sort of tricking the girl that you are trying to seduce into thinking that you're a charismatic guy by using these sort of canned routines. And if you practice these routines enough, you give off the facade, you give off the impression that you're a charismatic person. When in reality, that's not actually the case. And that's why a lot of these pickup artist guys, unfortunately, as they aged, if they haven't grown out of this phase, uh, they actually end up leading pretty miserable lives because it's just a string of one night stands with like drunk women who um, when they wake up next to them in the morning and they actually have a conversation with them and the lines and the routines run out, they're like, oh, wow, this guy basically just tricked me. He's not interesting at all. I, I, actually, he's kind of a huge loser. Uh, I don't want to see this guy ever again. What ends up happening with these guys is they learn game, but they don't become charismatic, uh, independent free-spirited, interesting people in the process. And that's really at sort of the crux of the argument for my case that charisma is more important than game because if you learn charisma, right? If you learn to become charismatic, you learn to become a good speaker, somebody who's good at making eye contact, somebody's good at being friendly, somebody's good at speaking and commanding uh, a room and getting people around them to enjoy their company. Similar to how it's easy for a seven foot tall athletic person to learn basketball quickly and become really, really good, really, really fast. It's the same exact thing when it comes to charisma. In fact, charisma and becoming charismatic is way tougher to learn and takes a lot more life experience and a longer time to develop than just developing, you know, game. On the other hand, you can learn game exclusively all you want, but it's actually going to come at the expense of your own self-image if you're just using a bunch of these canned lines and canned routines 
and you're not actually developing the muscle of charisma, that, that charisma muscle, if there was one. But like all things, there's sort of a golden mean between the two. You don't need to only learn to become charismatic to develop social skills in general, and also uh, specifically learn game. You can actually find the golden mean between the two. And I believe the golden mean between being charismatic and having game is simply just being an attractive man. Here's another way to look at it. You can look at charisma as the skill of being good at basketball, right? Like being able to dribble properly, being athletic, whatever, uh, being able to shoot the ball, like from you know any different angle, and just being an overall great basketball player. And you can look at game as the actual strategy that you use within the, you know, the games themselves. So you could have the best strategy in the world but if the players on your team are terrible, you're going to lose to a team that has the best players in the world and has no strategy. But that said, if the, play, if the team with the better players also has good strategy on top of that, then that's the team that wins championships and that's the team that wins a lot of games. And so the main things that I teach on this channel, because people always like to categorize you, they're like, oh, is Kevin a dating coach or is he not a dating coach? I mean, it just depends on what you mean by dating coach right what i actually teach mostly and focus mostly on is developing your skills as a human being developing your skills basically as a basketball player to help you become a great basketball player in terms of the actual strategy of the game itself i don't really cover that too much but i don't think that matters a lot because you being a great basketball player a great skilled basketball player is a way better predictor of you winning games rather than just having the right strategy during the game itself and so yeah every once in a while i will talk about strategy and stuff but you developing as a human being you developing into a charismatic attractive man whether it be through the way that you speak your charisma in general your presentation the way that you look right how muscular are you how lean are you what is your style like and just generally overall having this sort of like thirst and 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 kind of this uh hunger for living a great life and being true and authentic like people can feel that shit man and i reckon to say if you're a fan of this channel if you're a fan of my content you can feel that from me these videos i don't script them or anything at all i just kind of think about it go in front of the camera and i just talk and this skill that i've developed is something that has developed over time right through lots and lots of practice and believe it or not it's something that doesn't come naturally to me when i was in high school i was the shy kid i was the quiet kid i barely spoke so don't let anybody fool you into thinking that it's purely a talent that you're either born with or you're not because i was not born with it and i became better at it over time to the point where now at the filming of this video i have tens of thousands of people more specifically, 18,000 at this point, but still tens of thousands technically that follow this channel and like me enough to subscribe and say, hey, this guy actually has some good points. Let me subscribe to him. Your ability to speak and your ability to influence people around you and to be likable and to have a positive influence on people that are in your immediate uh, environment is perhaps the most important skill that you could ever learn in your entire life. When it comes to being a you know, top person in the company when it comes to getting job promotions, when it comes to being a CEO or the face of a company, you know, whatever. Again, these th are things that have nothing to do with, uh, you know, women and seduction. The number one determiner of your success when it comes to that is your ability to influence people. It's your ability to be likable. Oftentimes when it comes to being put in positions of power or positions of authority, it's more about the being likable to the gatekeeper that decides who gets that position rather than actually being good at the job itself. <laughs> now granted, a lot of the world's problems in general is due to that fact that it's not necessarily the most competent people that get put in positions of power. They tend to be actually the people who are the most charismatic and the most influential and have the best relationships with the gatekeepers that actually get that. But human beings, we're social creatures. We are inherently selfish creatures. So that includes the gatekeeper to these positions of power. And the best way for you to accurately predict that you can get the things that you want in life is to be a very effective communicator and to be very charismatic. That is a skill that can be learned just like anything. So go ahead and follow those resources down below. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. 
And as always, thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye.